Hello there, Loki the Gamer here. Uh, this is going to be not a, a little parody video, as you might have gone accustomed on this channel, but rather a tutorial. Uh, a tutorial on uh, my strategy playing Spain. Uh, members of the community have expressed an interest in learning how I recently played Spain, uh, because it is, of course, uh, a so-called lower tier. Civ, a, a term that I greatly dislike. I believe that there are no lower tier civs. All civs are created equal. It's just a matter of learning how to um, how to play them. Some civs are simply easier to play than others. That they're not better. They're just easier to play than others. And yeah, Spain is tricky. They are tricky. Uh, there is uh, there is I believe one good way of playing uh, of playing them. So they are powerful. They're just not versatile. I believe that there's one way of playing them, and it is the way that I'm about to uh, to uh, share with you. So if, if they have a weakness, it's simply that they're not versatile, and that's it. Uh, so this is my game as uh, as it as it is as it was at the end of it. So this is a game on uh, DT level on a large map and a victory was achieved right now on turn 219 so this is on the turn that i just won through a religious victory so this is the map as it is at the end of my game and uh, yeah 219 on dt level that's that's pretty early that is uh, a testament to how powerful spain really is uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty much a record for me there turn 219 uh, DD victory. So uh, here's how I did it. It can be summed up in uh, 12 steps. But before I start, um, uh, I start uh, covering these 12 steps. Let's go over. Uh, uh, let's go over what is typically difficult with a uh, religious game. Well, in any religious game, especially in a large map. The tricky thing is the end of the game, because yes, uh, converting your immediate neighbors, no problem. If you produce more faith than they do, that should not be a problem. But uh, then, uh, late in the game, see the people all the way across the sea, all the way across the world, you have to uh, spawn units from home. So your units, your units are still spawning from home, but they have to travel all the way across the map in order to meet a strong position. Civs with a uh, founded religion will fight you. They will have uh, apostles and debaters waiting for you. Combat will be uh, will be uh, uh, gruesome and uh, nasty. You, you need gurus to support your uh, your theological combat and all of that. And uh, it takes forever to send reinforcements because your spawning ground is at home. You cannot spawn unit anywhere else than at home, and you cannot heal your units other than at home. So this it is it is really hard to finish. A religious game because of how far your spawning ground your spawning ground is and you must there's no other way you must uh, uh, convert all of the other sieves including those that will fight back so that's the challenge of any religious game and you'll find out that Spain has an answer to that Spain can <laughs> cheat a little bit so, let's go over my 12 steps, and uh, these 12 steps are in order, they are roughly in order, roughly in chronological order that you should expect to tackle them as your game proceeds, but uh, of course, mileage may vary, in your case, uh, some of these points may happen out of order uh, because of many different factors, so take my order with a grain of salt, it, it, it may vary for you. Step 1, obviously, founder religion. So, do whatever you can to find a religion, That's go that goes without saying, uh, Philip II without a religion is not much Philip II at all. So, step one, find your religion. Step two, city planning. City planning, you need obviously to prioritize holy sites, you need to prioritize uh, campuses, and you need to prioritize uh, commercial hubs and harbors. These last two, uh, are there so that you have a decent amount of uh, trade routes. Why? Because uh, Spain has a trade route power that's really, that, 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 that is really, really useful. Uh, you don't need to put much emphasis on the economy at all, like in my case. And yet, my economy is fine. It's not tremendous, 
but it's it's fine. It, it it's not any problem. Yeah, two uh, 255. I think I had 300 a few turns ago. Uh, so there you go. Why? Thanks to uh, Spain's uh, trade route powers. So you need commercial hubs and harbors in order to unlock a decent amount of trade routes. But but they are your third priority. Your first and second are holy sites and campuses. Uh, so start putting some tax, start putting pins and tax everywhere early in the game, plan for the best places for you to put your, your districts. Not only place them in, uh, in relation to one another to, to, to give them good adjacency bonuses, but also plan ahead uh, for where your missions are going to go. Spain's unique improvement the mission is unbelievably essential for spain they have the potential to be extremely powerful um they are more powerful on uh, on another continent sure but uh you you must also build them on your home continent as well L look this one here this one had the the potential to be my best it was surrounded by one campus from this city Another campus, which sadly, at this stage in the game, shamefully, is not done yet. <laughs> but anyways, it was going to be done right here. So another campus from this city, another campus from this city, and a holy site also from this city. The only reason that these two holy sites are done here and not surrounding the mission is that these holy sites are just so much better here because they are touching uh, a uh, natural wonder if it weren't for that uh, natural wonder there would be another holy site here let me tell you so that that mission is just surrounded by uh, bonus yielding districts so uh yes your mission will give you amazing bonuses if you plan accordingly so step two is city planning step three is build two galleys and explore. Why two? Because obviously two is what you need to unlock a Eureka moment of a certain tech there. I forget which one, but yeah, you need to un you, you need to unlock as many uh, Eureka moments as you can for a very good reason that we will mention a little later. So uh, step f four is uh, uh, and uh, convert your neighbors. We already talked about that early in the game. Uh, before the advent of, uh, of Apostles, converting your neighbors should be easy. Do it. Start now. Do it now. Convert your neighbors uh, while the game is still at the stage of sheer numbers. Whoever makes more faith will supplant the other. There's no tactical combat involved because the Apostles are not in the game yet. So it's really it's a no-brainer. It should be relatively easy to, con to convert uh, most of your neighbors. Step five, do not forget about Moksha. You don't need to build him up first. You can still use, uh, you, you, you can still build Magnus if you, if you like. Uh, you can still unlock the wonderful Liang power here. But basically, don't forget about Moksha. You need a total of one, two, three, four promotions in order to reach this all important one. So do not forget about Moksha. By the time you can build apostles, you need to have this unlocked. Use your uh, government plaza uh, promotions if necessary in order to reach that. Step six is start colonizing another continent. Uh, you remember these two galleys that, uh, that we built? Well, they were built in order to discover new lands to, to conquer. There we go. In my case, it was close enough. There you go. There was an, uh, another island that belonged to uh, another continent. There was another island somewhat farther away, but I still colonize it. So uh, with Spain, colonizing is super important because your missions get more important on an another continent. Your trade routes get more important on another continent. And if your cities have loyalty problems, you even have a few loyalty bonuses through your missions. So yes, you need to uh, colonize early with Spain. And uh, step seven is now that you do have cities on other continents, uh, check to see if you are able to establish trade routes across continents. If you can't, no worries. It's still early in the game. You should be roughly in the uh, medieval era right now. And so don't be surprised that, that you cannot reach um, another continent from your cities uh, just keep checking every new era that you reach keep checking and when you can establish international trade routes do nothing but that 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 is how uh, your economy will do pretty well 
with very little effort just for having international trade routes because of Spain's power. Step eight is rush the gunpowder technology. Obviously, you should have been planning for that ever since the beginning of the game. So whatever um, Eureka moment you need to unlock in order to reach gunpowder as soon as possible, do it. Do it, save as much time as possible to unlock gunpowder. That is the most important uh, power in Spain's arsenal, the Conquistador. Step 9 is the exact same thing, but with the Civic Tree. You have to rush the Exploration Civic, because it finally allows you to build the mission you planned for them. Uh, you put little tacks and pins everywhere on your map uh, for the best possible spots, uh, surrounded by holy sites and campuses and you've had to wait this long to build them, well, this is where your uh, patience is rewarded. Of course, uh, it'll take you quite a while because you don't really have a great source of uh, culture. That's why you need to make sure that every city has a monument. That's going to be your, your best source of culture, really, for most of the game. With simple monuments, you'll be able to get uh, to exploration eventually, and then finally your missions will really turn this game into a beast. And step 10 is where things get get really interesting. Step 10 is where uh, Spain starts to cheat a little bit. You make war plans. Study your map. You should have met most civs by now. Study your map. And uh, of course, the civs closest to you should be converted. You do not need to invade them. Forget about them. Just cast them out of your mind. But. Step 10 is find yourself a target. Find a target who fulfills the following requirements. They must have founded a religion because they are your, uh, your rival. They are the ones who are incredibly difficult to convert because they'll fight back. They'll have apostles and debaters. So find somebody who has a religion. Find somebody who has fairly low uh, technology, so who is not too 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 far ahead of you in technology, and somebody who uh, does not have any Renaissance walls or barely any Renaissance walls, and finally somebody that you have easy access to. In my case, it was England. Eleanor of Aquitaine fulfilled all of these requirements as she was close to me, ish. Uh, see right here just across the water. She barely had any Renaissance walls She had fairly uh, tame te Technology and most importantly she had founded a religion. She had founded Catholicism no less How dare she steal Catholicism from Spain? That's why my religion is simply called bullshit. So I see I've got the uh, the Spanish uh, Spanish's little icon is a bull to begin with, and now my religion's icon is also a bull, so I've got double bullshit going on here. Um, and yeah, so in step 10, make some plans, so find yourself the, the, the perfect target. Prepare for war, I shouldn't have to tell you how to prepare for war. Make an ally who hates your target, so that you can have a military alliance and all of that, all, all that good stuff. Try to get some uh, diplomatic visibility over them. Step 11 is attack your target. Now, this is a target who has founded a religion, so uh, normally you would be sending apostles and fighting a, a very tr tricky theological war, but now you are fighting militarily. You are conquering their ass with your conquistadors, of course. Uh, the conquistadors get a plus 10 for having a religious escort. You, as, a, 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 as, as an inherent civ power, you, you get a plus 4 for fighting another religion. These bonuses, they add up so quickly. Plus 10 here, plus 4 here, and you can plug in War of Religion for another plus 4. Uh, you, can, you, you have your military alliance, if you've done that correctly, that's another plus 5. The bonuses add up so quickly. I had some conquistadors who reached all the way up to 98. They could have stood toe-to-toe -to -toe against tanks. That's how freakishly strong they were. And if your if your rivals has no Renaissance walls, a little siege tower, and boof, these cities will just fall like leaves. 
don't even matter that uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine compelled me to uh, conquer the same city about three times because it kept flipping back to her uh, because of her loyalty power. I didn't care. I just I just attacked it again and again and again. Free experience for my units. Hey, I don't, I, I don't mind. So yes, you will make short work of your opponent. And as you're doing so, you are strengthening your religion because of this amazing power. Uh, a conquered city instantly flips to uh, your religion when a conquistador captures it or uh, when a conquistador is, is near it. So if you haven't won by the time you're in the very late game and, you, and you've got modern armor and things like that, really advanced military units, keep at least one conquistador. Your conquistador doesn't need to fight, he just needs to be near the city, next to the city. And then yeah, a tank marches in the city, the Conquistador's power will still trigger. So take advantage of that. Uh, yeah, so uh, you'll agree that it is much easier to convert the leftover cities of a rival religion than converting the entire empire. So that is my Spanish strategy, is invade a, a, rival, a rival religion, converting their cities as you go, exerting a tremendous amount of pressure, which often will be enough to, con to, to, to convert uh, what's left. And then if you need a bit of help to convert what's left, all you need to do is bring in a few religious units to convert what's left. Oh, wait, no, you don't even have to do that because you already have religious units in the vicinity. Your religious units have been following you, your conquistadors all along because of this power. All you need to do to convert what's left of your opponent is take your religious escort and bring it over to the remaining last few cities if, if, if you don't feel like conquering them. So uh, a, a military conquest with Spain becomes a religious conquest. You get to do two things in one. That is how powerful it is. But that's not even the most powerful thing. We are about to talk about the most powerful thing that is in step 12. Step 12 is basically win the game. Finish up what's left. And you have two choices here. You can either attack someone else. You, you can take your conquistadors. If, if their 90-ish power is still a force to be reckoned with, you can just go against somebody else. Sure, you can do that. But you don't have to. You can convert the rest of the, the, of the map easily because you have a new spawning ground. Don't forget what I said at the beginning, the difficulty in most religious games is working your, uh, your religious units all the way across the map from your homeland to, uh, f to a very far away foreign land and uh, meet a lot, lot of opposition. You need a guru, oh no, I have to wait 15 turns uh, before one gets here. Things like that. You don't have that problem anymore because now you can spawn units from your new conquest. These cities are automatically converted to your religion. You can start spawning from there. Bring Moksha over and then start converting uh, st start spawning from there. So in my case, I didn't feel like conquering anymore. Uh, it was much, 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 much faster to just spawn from an ex-English city and uh, co and just convert the rest of the map. Even though, yeah, some of them uh, opposed me. I had to use debaters and I had to I had to, I had to engage in theological combat. I didn't care because my spawning ground was so close. And yeah, the last few sieves uh, just they just fell under the might of my uh, conversion of my apostles and, uh, and missionaries, and that was it. It was much quicker than uh, than attacking them militarily, and that and there's the Spanish strategy, a combination of uh, faith and uh, military strength, and guess what? That is exactly uh, what real life Spain is all about. And that is why I love this game. Because if you play, you know that you play a sieve the right way when you are essentially recreating their real life uh, history. So that's what's fascinating about, uh, about this. Now, uh, we have covered uh, all of Spain's powers here. And we've mentioned how each of these powers are immensely powerful if you use them correctly, except this one here, form fleets and armada earlier than usual. 
uh, I could have used it. Look, especially in my game, uh, these cities had coastal access. I really could have built some powerful ships early on. But what good are powerful ships when you've got, you know, conquistadors that are pushing 100? <laughs> you really you don't need fleets and armada. So that, I feel, is a bit of a wasted power because the other powers are too powerful. <laughs> and finally, the power that you might have expected, but guess what? You didn't because... Inquisition. Yeah, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition, especially in Civilization VI, because it sucks. No, no, it does not suck. Look at this. Read this. It's amazing. You just will never need it. You will never need Inquisitors, because if your religion is under attack and you need to defend it with Inquisitors as Spain, I think that you're doing something wrong. So you, your religion, even on deity, I find it extremely rare that uh, uh, my religion is under attack. So, uh, yeah, you really should not need uh, Inquisitors. The only reason that you might want to just launch an Inquisition is to get a little bit of a um, of an error score bonus. Because it, I, do, I do believe it gives you that. Uh, I wouldn't know. I don't know. I've, I've never launched any, an Inquisition ever, I think. Um, so there you go. So... That's all of Spain's powers, only two of which I did not use and I think are really kind of wasted. But of course, if anybody is going to have an Inquisition power, it might as well be Spain. That It does make sense. Uh, there you go, that, that uh, sums up my analysis of Spain. I had a tremendous uh, amount of fun playing that, but like I said, I think that is the only way to... Uh, to play them basically uh, conquest faith and don't forget to do a lot of colonies so that your missions can be truly amazing uh, and I don't think that there's any other way to play them efficiently but if you know a way please uh, feel free I would like to learn about it uh, mention it in the comments if you disagree if you still think after all of that that Spain sucks I, I'd like to hear about that as well if you have uh, suggestions of other sieves that you'd like me to, to cover, uh, whether they are uh, so-called low-tier sieves uh, like Spain or any other sieves, please let me know. And uh, don't forget to, to also check out my uh, little parody videos. I have a tremendous amount of fun uh, making them for you guys and uh, most uh, Civ players. Uh, basically, the more you know the game, the more you love the game, the more you are able to appreciate the little fallacies and logic in this beautiful game that we know and love, and therefore you should be able to appreciate my parody videos. And uh, don't forget uh, also to hit like, and the only payment that uh, us YouTubers really need is simply the little click on that subscribe button. Uh, that's all you need to do really to show us your appreciation is subscribe. And Loki the Gamer will see you again later. So don't forget to kneel and subscribe.